Hi, welcome back to the InterAccess YouTube channel, InterAccess.io. We're going to move forward talking about lending in a decentralized manner uh, with, with the idea of peer-to-peer -peer lending, pooled lending together, going a little farther into kind of the, this idea of credit unions, of unions that are being formed to facilitate uh, credit, the, the dispersal of credit, the dispersal of debt uh, worldwide, inter internationally. And to show a little bit about how that might work, um, and, and there are some projects that are actually working on this right now, um, because part of the problem, of, of course, is. So we'll go back to my usual example, my usual Adam and Ron example. Okay. And so if I know Ron, right, we have this trust going on here, and I know Ron. Ron says, "Look, I need to borrow ten thousand dollars." I can say, I know you, I'm, I know you're good for it, you can pay me 6% interest, here's, here's my money. Okay, now, if we wanna take that uh, a step bigger, if I say, look, I know Ron, Ron is, is good for this money, he's got this really good business, he'll, he'll pay back, maybe he, we, we say, look, Ron, uh, I say Ron will put up his car as collateral and his car is worth $8,000 at the time, he's got a truck worth $8,000 as collateral. Now, I might not wanna lend Ron the full 10,000, I might go out and say, look, to, to five different, to, to four different people, I'll say, look, I'll put in $2,000. If each one of you puts in $2,000, right, we'll have our $10,000. I'm gonna kind of vouch for Ron because I, I know him and I know this business plan. I'm going to take on that responsibility. We can split this uh, interest that, that comes in. We're gonna use his truck as, as collateral. Well, these four people might go, yeah, we're in for that. We'll, we'll get, you know, 5% here, you get the, the you get your you know 5% plus our extra 1%, and that 1% is my fee for being the one who, who does the underwriting. Now, I might also say, look, I will take the risk that if Ron doesn't pay and we have to take his truck and go sell it for $8,000, I'll distribute that, you know, most of that to you guys and I'll kind of take a hit. Uh, but in, in return for that, I get this extra 1%. That's what I get. Okay, so now I have gotten essentially investors to invest in this loan for Ron. It's not investing in equity in his company. It's investing in the loan to actually give him money. I have performed this function of the underwriter. Right? I've said I, I trust him. Now, the questions are how does this scale, right? Because I might know Ron. We might have this trusting relationship. Maybe we don't know each other that well. But maybe now I have this, this business, right, that I say, look, I, I lend money to people like Ron. I know what Ron's doing. Ron is, is in the, the delivery business, and I know that um, he's really good at this, and, and I've seen businesses like his, and this is what I do. And I'm going to lend him $10,000. And if other people come into my office and need money, I will lend them, you know, 5000 10000 And here are my requirements. You have to be in this particular industry. You have to have been in business for three years. You have to have a certain credit, uh, credit score. Um, you have to be making a certain amount of money for, for that time. I'm going to look at all that. I'm going to kind of go through that underwriting. And, and when I do, I'm going to go to these other people and say, look, we're going to put money in no pool. We're going to put $100,000 and I'm going to take it upon myself to go find these people that I'm gonna lend money to and I'm, and I'm gonna keep these certain requirements. It might not be that I'm always looking for people in the same field. It might be that I'm looking for people who are, um, I, I'm looking for people who are all in the same age range or I'm looking for people who all have the, you know, a super high credit score who don't want to necessarily go to a bank and don't want it necessarily to affect their credit. I might have all these other criteria, but I'm acting as kind of the underwriter and I'm able to get this pool of money where I can do that now Right in the traditional finance sense, uh, if I know if I have this relationship and I know these people, um, there might be some securities law issues. There might be some legalities there that uh, we need to abide by. Um, but but I can't necessarily go internationally and raise like a million dollars to go try to fund something like this be, because one there's there's securities issues, there's legal issues. There are, um, and, and then there's the typical fees and friction, right? To do all that, to get all these people to put money in my little union here, my little investment here that I can go lend out and make 6% on it um, is time intensive and the amount that 
that I would have to pay in terms of fees, uh, in, in terms of just other money I have to, to pay to, to banks, to lawyers, to everything else, is just not worth it right now for this, this small interest rate we make and I wouldn't make any money out of it. So your question is where does blockchain and DeFi lending and peer-to-peer and -peer lending come in? Well, what if, again, e either, either we could have this relationship, right, where, where I'm here and, and I can be in any country in the world, right, and I have my little people around, right? So, so uh, we can imagine it this way. Let's say we, we you know, uh, live in a uh, village here and there and and money comes in the door and we need to decide who gets to borrow money for farming crops whatever it is and we can dole out a hundred dollars here and two hundred here and three hundred here and one hundred here okay and we get to decide on this and this comes back a hundred and five three hundred and ten so so the money comes back in Okay, now what we can do is, is if we take this data, this, this type of data, and all these people, unfortunately, we reduce them to wallets, and the wallets have their data on them. Here's how much they make. Here's what, what a, you know, what, whatever sort of credit score they have. Here's what they do for a living. Whatever it might be, we can take that data and put it in here. Well, now it's transparent and immutable and all the things we love about blockchain technology. Now, if I'm an outside investor over here in some other country, I might go, oh, look at this. This particular pool of people is making, you know, 12% uh, interest by, loan, by, by making these little micro loans, and here's what they look for, and I can look in here and see all the credit information about all the people that are borrowing money. Well, I want to make 12%, so I'm going to help fund this so that they can make more of these loans. And again, this is immutable and transparent, and I can see all this data online, uh, on, on chain, so I'm willing to connect my wallet to this wallet, which is then going to go through some protocol and make loans to these other wallets. Now, this wallet could be a person that's actually talked to these people. Um, this could be just a, a uh, protocol, it could be an app that's actually doing this. It doesn't matter. This is doing whatever the underwriting is and once this underwriting, uh, underwriting is proven and once I can see via smart contract all the different parameters, I might go, look, I'm willing to make some sort of investment and af at, uh, after this 12% is here, I want, um, you know, 9% on my money. Okay, so 3% stays here. 9% here, but if, if they were playing around with you know $10,000 and I fund $100,000 and they, they can make all these more all these other loans, well they would like that. Well now you can you can potentially do that. I'm not saying it can always happen, but you can potentially do that where I can invest my money in this other pool, which is then investing it in in other loans. Now this of course happens in the the traditional world. It just happens on a much larger scale, it's, we, we create securities effort, uh, uh, out of different baskets of loans, but this democratizes it. This gives others the ability to participate. This allows these micro loans, and it can be done, for instance, at the village level. This, is, of course, is what we, we love to talk about when we talk about the unbanked and underbanked and the fact that within some village in, in uh, a developing country, an underdeveloped country, they can go make these loans, but I can help fund them, and not only am I helping fund for a good cause, but I can actually make money in the process. This isn't just charity, this is me actually helping and actually making a, a profit, making a decent level of interest. And this can all be done through tokenization, decentralized lending, uh, de decentralized finance because of the tokens, the immutability, the, trans the, the transparency of the blockchain that we can see all these transactions moving through. Now what we have to solve for is something like identity, Right? How, <clears throat> how are we going to see the identity, who these people are? Now, they don't want me to know exactly who they are, right? but we have, to, we have to bring it down to some levels that I can evaluate, either algorithmically, where I have some sort of al uh, algorithm here that looks across all, the, there might be another union over here and another union over here, and I'm trying to evaluate where my money's going to go. Well, maybe this one is making 12%, but they have a, you know, a 95% 
uh, payback ratio, and everyone in here is, is taking out these little micro loans. So I know from a risk perspective, uh, even if a couple of them don't pay, I'm still going to make most of my money. Whereas this, you, you know, they, they might be making 13%, but they only have three loans outstanding. So if any one of these doesn't pay, it's going to hurt me more. Well, from a risk perspective, I don't like that. I can create an algorithm because this is all transparent. Uh, I can look across here and go, look, this is where I want to put my money. I might decide I want a higher interest rate and I'm more willing to do these higher dollar amount loans with my money uh, because I feel like these are a better credit risk or something. I feel like this, you know, all these people are doing it for farming and if there's one bad year from a crop perspective, these are all going to get wiped out and I have quite a bit of risk. Or if we want to take this several steps further on the composability of this, I can go, look, I'm willing to do this. I know my risk is uh, if, if uh, you know, a storm comes along and wipes out everyone's crops or a flood or, or, or drought or something. So not only am I going to invest here, but then I'm also going to invest in some sort of decentralized insurance product that takes care of all this. Well, now we can do that because, because we have access to all this data as well. So coming in here also, we're going to have to have data feeds. Right, data on on uh, the on on crops, on weather. We're gonna have to have micro data feeds. Another blockchain feature, right? Which is gonna feed this. It's also gonna inform this insurance. This is getting really exciting. In case you couldn't tell, which is why I have to draw it on a board and not just talk about it in a in a podcast or something, because it's it's too much for that. Now, I might want to invest some into all of these pots, right? This might be uh, midterm loans. This might be you know, uh, fifteen day factoring or something like that. Right now, I can potentially invest in all these, and all these either they're people, either they're unions. This, these are different underwriters that underwrite for different purposes. Now, all these different underwriters can start their own businesses because they can say, "Look, I'm going to be really good at underwriting this tiny particular type of loan, but because I'm so good at it, now I, I can I can really." Uh, specialize in it. And I might find people that are in my town. I might find people that are worldwide. And I say, look, you just have to connect your wallet. You have to have this certain credit information. And I will loan you money. And this underwriter gets so good at it that I, that you know, myself and other investors are willing to keep giving them money because they're really good at this, at, at the underwriting that they, that they take. And it's all transparent, immutable, everything else we'd like about it. We can have these micro payments. So you see, we're taking peer-to-peer -peer lending. Once we kind of solve for things like identity, kind of solve for things like credit on chain, um, once we add in the, the micropayments and everything, there, there is the ability to create new business offerings around debt and around credit and around lending. The fact that, that you can be an expert in a particular subject and be able to lend money, be able to, and, and this underwriter could even lend and potentially sell or, or market or somehow get this decentralized insurance involved and say, look, I'm gonna lend to these people worldwide and I'm gonna help provide this insurance type product based on these, these data feeds, right? What it does, again, is it democratizes. It gives more people the ability to participate. It gives all these people the ability to borrow money that they didn't have otherwise to keep their lives going, we can do it in a way that it minimizes fees and friction so they can borrow more of it. So borrowing $100, they actually get you know, $99. They don't try to borrow 100 and they only get 80 because it took us so much money in, in transaction fees to get there that they didn't actually get all the money. They want to borrow 100 they get 99 Okay, They pay back 105 we get 104 that, that's, that's how it works because the, the fees are lower because we're not necessarily using the traditional banking rails. In addition, we can lend, we, we can maybe feel comfortable lending internationally because maybe because we're using crypto, I don't have to worry about currency risk quite as much because everything's being done in DAI or everything's being done in some sort of cryptocurrency. I don't have to worry about the currency risk as much. I don't have to worry about bank risk or anything like that. They're going to pay me back somehow. Uh, they're they're going to pay me back and die. Now, whether they go sell their crops for die, I don't know, but that, that's a, a whole different subject. But, but they're going to pay me back and die. It's going to go back through the system, and I can feel comfortable doing this potentially, again, this is potential, on an international basis because of the fact that I, I can use the crypto or, or the decentralized finance rails without actually using something like 
the uh, Bitcoin where, where I'm subject to the volatility. I can use stable coins to do this. Okay, I can use smart contracts. Now, in this case, we might not have a lot of collateral here, but the collateral uh, a lot of times can be either the identity, it can be some sort of DeFi-related credit that we have. The collateral can be on this person doing the underwriting, and they can say, look, I will provide um, whatever you, you need as, as collateral. I'll provide my reputation as collateral so that I can get this money because I'm so good at this. And so my reputation is essentially my, my collateral at that point. And if at any point um, all these people don't repay and, and it turns out that this person wasn't very good at their job, then somehow there's some sort of griefing process where this person loses money so the investors are, are made somewhat whole. Maybe there's some insurance on top of this, some decentralized insurance. Maybe everyone else in the system contributes to some sort of decentralized insurance to keep the network going, but it's a way to do it without necessarily having third-party intermediary banks and third-party intermediary governments uh, to, to control some of this. We can eliminate some of the, the fees and the friction and enable more people to participate. I can now participate in microloans in other countries without having to worry about the transaction costs and the currency risk and everything. These people can get their loans without having to worry about trying to find me, right? trying to get on some website and begging I don't want to say begging, asking for a loan for $100 or $200 or $1,000 to keep their farm going. These people can ask for, for money to, uh, you know, to, to keep a business, to open a restaurant in some city, and, and there might be someone who's really good at underwriting those types of loans. Okay? And so what we can do is take the skills those people have, whether it's underwriting, whether it's farming, whether it's insurance, whatever it might be, and they can find a way to now more easily get paid for it because we're gonna give them the rails to do that. That is what's exciting about peer-to-peer -peer lending in the decentralized economy. It opens up the participation both from the investor side and from the, the borrower side. So that is a little bit more about peer-to-peer -peer, uh, decentralized lending. There are companies that are doing this. There's one called Union out of, out of California. There's one called Maple Lending out of Australia that's doing this that, that I know of. I'm sure there are a, a bunch of others that I don't know of that are actually trying to do this. And I apologize if I missed you. Um, but talk about it in, in the comments here, and, and we'll, we'll discuss that, and we'll call attention to it as well. It's very exciting. Um, it, it's a, a very exciting time for all this because what we're seeing is with the proliferation, the adoption uh, of this technology, the easier on-ramps, the easier off-ramps, we're finding that these kinds of things are possible. This micro-lending that, that, that started with the internet is now uh, being made more available because we've created the internet of money. So this is exciting. I hope you like the video. Please subscribe. Please um, tell us what you like in the comments. Tell us you like it. Ask any questions in the comments. Uh, find us on Twitter at Interaxis8. Uh, email us info at interaxis.io. And we hope to see you in future videos.